Welcome to The Gathering Podcast, a podcast to help us grow together. I said podcast twice there. A podcast podcast. A podcast that helps us <laughs> podcast and podcast to grow together. Yep, yep. So uh, we got some fun stuff planned yeah, for today. I hear you I hear maybe that you have a game. I do I do have morning. a game. So okay. so here here's how the game is going to work is uh, Steve, I'm going to ask you um, if you can guess the top five of a given category. Um, so you gotta you gotta guess what's gonna be in those top five of okay. that category. Make sense? What if I get number six? That doesn't count. Uh, I'll tell you that it doesn't count. It doesn't in there. Yep. But I'm right. close. Okay. So so yep. we're we're gonna hop in and do this. So the category is the top five, uh, I think this one's probably pretty easy for okay. you. The, the top five um, most selling uh, music artists okay. of all time. Yes. I think I know number one. All right. The Beatles. The Beatles are number one. That's right. Okay. Uh, Michael Jackson. He is number four. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. Um, that surprised me too. Michael Jackson is number four. Let's see. Um, I know it's probably not any new artists. I think you might be surprised. Oh, really? I, I want to say Taylor Swift, but mm. I don't think she's in there. She's not in the top five. I, I feel like she will be eventually. I, I, did you hear she made like a billion dollars? Or no, I didn't hear a that. A billion dollars just from this tour. That's crazy. <laughs> Insane. But I feel like she's been around forever. I don't know why she's she's not higher on the list. Okay, so let's see. Um, maybe Rolling Stones. They are not in the top five. Mm. They've been around. They're another band. Um, Aerosmith. No. Wow. This is this is stumping you. Okay. The, the, uh, think the, think you you got the um you got the king of pop. Now you got oh Elvis. Elvis. I'm gonna there say you Elvis. Go. There yep. you go. Yeah. I knew he had to be on the yeah, list. So you got you got two more. So Beatles are number one. Okay. Elvis is number two. Michael Jackson is number four. So you're trying to guess that number three slot. Okay. Number. You should know number five. You of all people should know number five. Oh really? That's a hint. I I would not say I'm a fan of this person, but I know you are. It's not Rihanna. It is Rihanna. What? Yeah, number five on this That's list. That's very surprising. I, I am surprised by this. I will say I did not verify the uh, the accuracy of this so list. So what is the list? The, the, the top, top five, five most, most selling, selling wow. artists. Wow. That's yeah. seriously impressive. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. Okay, so we're missing no, one. Not three. you two. It's not you two. No, not you two. Um, the thing, uh, and I'm, I'm running out. I'm more, running out of ideas. Um, more recent in, in their popularity, but not oh, really? like, they're not like just brand new. Like you would know them. Oh, Matt, do you have an idea? I was gonna say Madonna, but giving that. So, so this this person is in a category uh, of music, a genre of music that hasn't been uh, really named on this list yet. Bruno Mars. Nope, that's pop. <laughs> So it's not country. Hey, I would say nope. Not country. You want me to give it to you? Yeah, let's let's have it. It's Drake. Drake. Yep. I mean, I could see that, but I'm actually surprised by that one too. I, I heard he's like, I think like number one or number two most streamed artist on Spotify right now, or something like that. So yeah, yeah. I would not have guessed the newer artists. Well, maybe, maybe you'll do better on this. Okay, one, right? what is this one? So this one is top five highest grossing movies. Okay. Of all time. Yeah. Now, Matt, you sent me this list. Is this just in theaters or is this like all time, all? It should be all time. All okay. time, okay. I don't know. I think I'm going to get a few on this list. I think I you will. I'll get them all. I think you uh, will. Titanic. That's number four. Okay. That was number one until like 10 years ago, which yeah. is kind of. I know that one was huge. Brooke, have you seen Titanic? You have? Nice. Yay. That's one that they, I feel like they could redo. So this is But the... it's still, it's honestly, we watched it because it just came on Netflix recently. We watched it again. I'm like. This movie actually really holds up. Like the CG is a little suspect, especially when they show like the widescreen of the boat. Like you're like, you can tell they've, <laughs> the water does not look but, right. But you know what's crazy is when that movie came out and yeah. you saw that, you went, whoa, that's yeah. crazy realistic. Well, you know? also I heard something recently on a podcast where they talked about um, how they got the sky yeah. wrong. You heard that too? I've heard about that, yeah. So I don't know what the sky is supposed to be, but it's pretty clear sky. Yeah. Like you could see the moon and everything <laughs> in the in the like wide shots. But no, have you though seen the, the, the old one from 1958, A Night to Remember? Nope. <laughs> what? No. <laughs> Matt, I have not seen the original... Titanic okay. movie from 1958. I'm probably and gonna. To I'm probably gonna get the rest of these. Right, wrong. So you got, you okay. got number four. What Titanic. about E.T.? E.T. is not on okay. the list. Mm. E.T. is 
not even top 10. It's not even top 10. Wow. Okay. Now I'm starting to really struggle here. No, I only got had one you got, you that gotta I was think, confident uh, in. You got to think more recent. Okay. Like very recent. Very recent. Barbie. No, not, not that <laughs> recent. <laughs> okay. Um, can you give me a hint? Uh, now I feel like yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I okay. thought I was so, going to be able so, to name some, but I, uh, the ones I'm thinking are not. One, All of these that are on the list are um, like a part of a multiple movie Okay, Terminator. Uh, it's not Terminator. Okay, yeah, I didn't make it on there. Um, one of these is a uh, a uh, a brand of oh, movies. Oh, Fast that, and Furious. Uh, that I like. <laughs> <laughs> no, not Fast and Furious. Rocky. Uh, they're on like a Rocky Two apply. They're like on number like eighteen for Fast and Furious or something. I don't know. It just seems like every other year there seems to be a new one. So. Jurassic Park. Nope. Um, Indiana Jones. No, this is harder than. Um, I Think, think blue people. Smurfs. <laughs> <laughs> blue man group. Uh, Avatar. That's Avatar. That's, that's, that's Avatar is number one on this Avatar's list. Avatar's number one. Yep. Yeah. It's not totally surprising. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you this one because okay. you're not going to get it now. But Avatar is also number three because of the second one. So Avatar, The Way of the Water, is the third highest grossing. So okay. I'm as... I'm, of James Cameron has, has three, three of these. Okay, so James Cameron movies. James Titanic Cameron and made the avatars. Well, James Cameron also made Terminator. Oh, he did. Didn't he? Am I am I right on that? I will check it out, but you keep on. Okay. I, I feel like Terminator it's, is a very relevant movie that we should probably encourage people to watch again, just as we're like Steve's all right. hopping in into you. VR Matt and says AI. Steve is right. And John John was talking over that. I'm not sure if everyone heard. He's right about what? About James Cameron, James Cameron did, did Terminator. Terminator. Yeah. Let's see another James Cameron movie. So you've already got all the James Camerons yeah. on this list. Oh, I have. Yeah. Two Avatars and Titanic. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would not have guessed. Like, it's not as an epic movie. Like, Terminator was a really cool movie, but it doesn't seem like the some of the James Cameron stuff that he normally does. No, it's like too uh, too normal of a movie. I don't know how to explain too, that. Like, too much action, maybe. Yeah, I don't not, know. Avatar had a lot of action too. But yeah. The Terminator films were were before James Cameron kind of kind of became his own thing and, and <laughs> started doing his own films because the Terminator films had multiple directors. Okay. Directors. Why well, I, I give up. What what All are right. the other ones? So so number number 2 on the list yeah. is Avengers Endgame. Okay. Um Marvel super popular. Yes. Um, and number 5 is Star Wars Episode 7. Ah, Force why Awakens. didn't I think of Star yeah. Wars? Yeah. 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 I don't know why that one. It's, I should have guessed that. Well, here's the thing about that: that it's the, the episode seven. It is the most palatable of of the uh, <laughs> sequels. But it. What, what's so, your favorite mm, Star Wars movie? Uh, episode five, Empire Strikes Back. That's, I would agree. Great. It's actually like. Did you like? It's a standalone, a great movie. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the Wookies kind of make that one. <laughs> Wookies. Are you thinking, are you thinking Ewoks in I'm Episode just Six? I'm just. I'm just trying to. Just trying to. <laughs> Make people angry. Yeah. Ewoks are cute. Yeah. Okay. What's, do we have another one? Oh yeah. Thir this is, is this the third is, one. Is this like David's I, Mount so, Rushmore of Mount Rushmore's? I just, yeah, but I thought this would be way faster. <laughs> <Yeah>. so, <laughs> we're struggling on this. I don't think I would have done any better. Okay. So, okay. So this one's a little more fun. This yeah. one is very much uh, in the fact that we're pastors and, and we, right. like this is, this is in our lane. So yeah. top five, uh, I think it's most, Purchased or is it most read? I don't know how they. I believe it's kinda... most purchased. Yeah, okay. that would make sense. Most purchased. How would they know what people were yeah, reading? Yeah, yeah. Best, best selling, selling. Yeah. which sounds weird, but best selling Bible translations. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, this one's got to be number one. The King James. It's on the list. It's not number one. It's number five. Okay. Is New King James? Do they consider New that? New King James did not make the list. Okay. So they're probably just considering that. The they, same. This might be not it's be all time. Five? Is this all time or is this? Uh, this is, okay, this I, can't be all time. I feel like I'm not going to get this, this now. Okay. All right. So sometime this was the top five okay. list. <laughs> okay. So, wow. I'm kind of surprised by that. Okay. So um, ESV. That's number two. Okay. That's like probably the number one here. It, okay. NIV. Is that number that's, one? That's number one. Okay. That, that Crazy makes sense. Crazy popular. I, I would have thought King James because there's uh, because of people who like King James are so loyal to it. You would think, yep. but okay. So we got number one, number two, um, the New Living Translation. 
That's number three. Number three. Okay. What? The Good News Bible? <laughs> nope. Is that a Good News translation? What about uh, the, the Action Bible, the comic action? book one? <laughs> that's not a translation. So, uh, The Message? No. Because that's not a translation. That's a, that's a good question. Like, the, is the, the message get considered in this? Yeah. But I that don't think it very popular, list. too. Um, yeah. RSV? Nope. That's a horrible... Bo- I'm just kidding. <laughs> it is, but... Uh, hmm. Uh, this one... Uh, I think is probably the least known, like name, most like least uh, you least hear it, but it's number four. Uh, I'm just gonna give it to you. It's the Christian Standard Bible. Oh, uh, okay. Which I think used yeah. to be the Holman Christian Standard, mm-hmm. but they got rid of my name. <laughs> Haters. Okay, so we did better on that. We one. did better on that. One. I, I'm actually proud that we like did better on that. Yeah. You know. So, fun fact uh, about about on the the message. It used to be number eight. It is now no longer top 10. What I think that's a good thing. What's your favorite translation? So uh, for my personal uh, study and reading, I like the um, NASB, okay. um, which that's is a good one very too. similar to ESV. It's just like, uh, it's just a little harder to read, but yeah. it's what I grew up with, so I like okay. it. Um, but when I teach, my favorite is um, NLT, New Living Translation, because yeah. it's um, very easy to read. Very easy to read, and it's very um, straightforward. Straightforward, straightforward language. language. Yeah, you're you're not having to guess what they mean yeah. a lot. You yeah. still kind of have to do of like, well, what do they? But it kind of unravels yeah. a lot of the. A I think lot of I the, think one of the hard things, things you need for to question, um, yeah. a lot of people, and especially when you're you're teaching, is you don't want to have to spend a lot of time uh, explaining uh, necessarily the the. Having to explain things in the verse because of the structure of right. the sentence, right? And so when you're teaching, I think it's just sometimes easier to um, find the verse, the version that's a little more uh, straightforward, plain language, so you can actually get to the point that yeah. the verse is trying to make. But I also personally struggle with reading out loud. I'm not sure oh, why. Same. I'm not sure why. Like I can read same. in my head just fine and pretty fast, but I I, I can't. I can barely speak in public. Apparently, yeah. like I had so <laughs> many gaffes on Sunday. It was. What? I don't you, think you did. I, uh, I I posted this clip on my Facebook. Uh, I'm going to not be able to say it now because I'm in my head about it. But I tried to say exorbitant, exorbitant, and I couldn't get it out. And so I just pivoted and I said, there's a lot. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Okay. Tongue twisters on Sunday are not cool. Not cool. Yeah. All right. Well, I actually, speaking of sermon on Sunday, I have a few questions for you. I um, may have some answers. About that. Um, <laughs> so this is this is kind of like the question of like, why should we listen to what you have to say? Why is it relevant to our lives? Why is, it, why is your message important? But um, why is it important to not be conformed? You yep. talked about conforming to the world and being transformed. Yep. Yeah. So exp- explain that a little bit. So, so the, the chief and obvious answer is like, God says, don't be conformed, okay, yeah. but be transformed but on, but, a, on a practical level yeah. right so uh, so if we read it and there's a direct commandment we should we should do, do it. it right okay um but the god's commandments for us um often carry with it benefits um and his restrictions for us uh are often to protect us from from pain right and there's a lot of pain that happens in our lives when we are conformed to the world um you know i talked about galatians 5 right where it lists the results of following your flesh um and uh contrasted that against the fruit of the spirit, right? And uh, it is a long list. I'm not going to try to do it from memory, but if you look it up in Galatians 5, um, every single item on that list, uh, when it plays itself out, brings pain and destruction for the people um, who, who are partaking in that, in that, in those sins and in those issues. And, um, you know, when we are conformed, we fill our lives with the values of the world, with um, the, we start acting in the ways of the world and the results of the flesh are what we get. And yeah. so um, when you're conformed, you will experience pain, but also you you don't get to experience what God wants you to experience, which mm-hmm. is the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. Um, and so um, as Christians, we should desire the fruit of the Spirit, um, and we should desire just to do what God has called us to do. Yeah. Um, but the benefit is we also don't have to experience or f- like live into fully yeah. the results of our flesh. Right. And, and I would say... It, it's really simple, actually. It's it's um, if, if you life is difficult enough, right? Life oh, yeah. is hard, and if you follow what the scripture has to say about these things, your life will be better 
not actually easier, yeah. but it'll be a better, more fulfilled life. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes that takes work and effort. But in the end, when you see the results, you say that was worth it. Yeah. So often the world tells us that um, what will bring us happiness is um, usually on a very surfacey level, right? If you have this, you will be happy. If uh, you know you do these things, it will make you happy. Um, but what God calls us to is not actually just like surface level happiness, but it's to deep and lasting joy. And uh, God's joy is the kind of joy that um, even when we go through hard things, we can still have joy. You know, He says, "Count it to joy, my brothers, when you go through trials," and, uh, because if our joy is found in Him and rooted in Him. Um, no matter how hard our life gets, like we can still go to that joy. Um, and it doesn't mean that like you don't get to experience some of the the fun and the happiness that that um, we experience in our lives, but um, it's, it's about what you're pursuing and what you're focusing on. Um, and it's crazy how many of the most joyful people I've ever known, like the people who just, you'd look at them and you're like, how are you happy right now? Um, have gone through some of the hardest things that, you know, you've ever seen people go through, um, you know, and the, the math of the world says they shouldn't be happy, but because they have uh, the spirit and because they have decided to find joy in, in God, they go through those hard things and they still have joy. And in fact, it's like more joy mm -hmm. than, than I've seen a lot of other people yeah. have who have way easier lives. Yeah, definitely. Agreed. Okay. Next question here, which is. Um, how can you tell the difference between someone who's a curmudgeon? Okay, you talked a little bit about this yeah. on on your yeah. in your intro on Sunday, and someone who has wise advice yeah. because a curmudgeon is someone who is, you know, just kind of wants people to hear their advice, kind of like yeah. a naysayer on on all things, just kind of like not someone you want to hang around, yeah. right? And then someone who has wise advice is someone who you should want to model your yep. life after someone who's been through it and, and knows what's good and bad. Yeah. So let, let's talk about it. Like, uh, let's use social media since that's what we were talking about. Let's, yeah. let's use that as the, the issue. So um, a curmudgeon will start with uh, the premise that, oh, TikTok is bad. And now I'm going to make the argument why it's bad, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, the person who is trying to seek, find wisdom in that area will say, Hey, I know um, this is like what God says is good. This is what the world is saying is good. Um, I'm going to practice wisdom in these things and may come to that result, right? And say, hey, yeah, TikTok's not good for you, yeah. right? Um, and they, the curmudgeon and the wise person may have the same like prescription for the world, mm -hmm. but the way that they got there is very different, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, uh, <laughs> I thought someone was about to walk in and scared me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you know, the, the other thing uh, I think, I use when I'm when I'm talking to people to, to kind of figure out if somebody is wise and worth listening to versus um, somebody who is just highly opinionated mm. um, is the uh, the level at which the person who's opinionated and the aggressiveness that they have towards the issue um, versus like the grace I see out of yeah. wise people. So wise people often frame it as like like. Uh, I think this may be better for you. Right. Um, but let me hear your side of the story, mm -hmm. you know, where the people who are just... They're looking to listen. They're looking to listen and to help you observe. learn versus just beat you over the head with what I've determined is is true. Well, I feel like curmudgeons don't like change, no. right? So anything that's changing, anything that's different, it was always better in the past and yeah. always worse in the future. And you're like, well, I mean, I can hear what you're saying, but if you don't tell me why and you're just saying all social media is bad, well... You know, there's always good and bad with everything. Yeah, I mean, we we every every uh, every time there's new technology or a change in our the way our society works, right? There is going to be an element of people who, and they're not necessarily wrong, right? Th their concerns are valid, and often they're right about some of the issues we have with these things. But um, you know, people who are against TV, people who are against radio. So we we just kind of have to, um, as Christians, practice wisdom and say, yeah. hey, this thing is in our world, right? Um, and I need to wisely interact and engage with this. Um, and yeah, there are some things where I have to say, I can't have anything to do with this because it is that um, either that wicked or that harmful, but, um, we have to practice discretion and wisdom. We can't just say, well, why can't we just pick our ideal time in human history and just stay there? Yeah. Um, Cause the world doesn't care what we want. They, yeah. they, they're going to keep going. Yeah. Do you think as Christians, it's, easy to become a curmudgeon? Oh, super easy. Okay, so why? Super easy. Um, so 
we one of the big things about being a Christian is that we we accept God's truth, mm-hmm. right? And we say God's truth is higher than what the world says is true or what I even think is true. Um, and so we try to build our lives off those truths. Um, but often what we do is we like to make lists. And so we're actually not ourselves trying to pursue God and listen to the Holy Spirit and, and grow in our wisdom. We just want to accept the list. And we say the things on this list are okay. Things outside of that list are wrong. And that's actually what we're using to define truth. And we never once had that conversation with God or got into our Bibles ourselves. And so what happens is if we just start with the list, um, we find ourselves not having a lot of grace for people who are outside of that list. Um, and then that's where we get that attitude that's a little more um, negative, mm-hmm. harsh, um, you know, and all of a sudden we start, stop acting like the people God wants us to be. You know, the, the rules that God has for us, right, are so that we grow. But if we just start with the rules and we're not going to the source of our growth, yeah. right, like I'm the vine, you are the branches. If we're not, if we're not attached to the vine and we're just looking at the list, um, that list is never going to make us grow. Yeah. It's just going to keep us, it might keep us in line, but you're going to stay where you are. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And, and I like the, um, like the sports analogy in it of like if you had a, a soccer match and there were no rules, <laughs> people who enjoy soccer would never want to play it. Right. Right. The rules are there to make the game fair for both sides and well, make, the it, game, make it enjoyable. And that's what I was gonna say. That was the next point yeah. is that it also makes it enjoyable. And I think the same is true in, in life. Um, the rules that God gives us are for us to have uh, to have a more enjoyable life. Like, would would you love in soccer to be able to use your hands? I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, would, for yeah, sure. Yeah, great, right? <laughs> I mean, there's certain people who aren't good could just if they're if there's someone is much better, they could just pick up the ball and run with it, right? But that sounds great. You, Minus the running, right? <laughs> sure. So when God gives us commands, um, it it helps us all be on the same yeah. playing field, and and to you know ultimately when we need Him. It, it doesn't matter how much power and success you have on this world. Someone who has money and someone who doesn't equal playing for, field yeah. because we're all in the same place. We all fall short of what God requires of yeah. us. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Next question here is, um, how do we start on the path of transformation in our lives? Yeah. W- so like, I know that this is kind of difficult because you don't know where people might yeah. be because some people may be further along because we all need transformation in our lives no matter where we are. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so uh, I'm going to assume I'm, I'm talking to a Christian, mm-hmm. right? And let's say you're a Christian and um, you've given your life to Jesus, but you are aware now that you have some areas in your life where you have been conformed to the world. And so where, where do you start now? Because you're trying to go towards transformation. And we're given the solution to, to this. Like the, the way you are transformed is by the renewing of your mind. And so you need to renew your mind. So you kind of have to understand what that is. And um, I like, uh, there's something kind of crazy here. It's, it's, it's not like be transformed because you've been renewed. It's by the renewing of your mind. Right. Like, so it's something that happens and keeps happening. And if we, you're renewing your mind, you will be you transformed. will be transformed. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so you, we have to uh, constant, consciously. What, what does transform mean? Transform. Yeah. Um, so when we are transformed, um, we as humans, uh, because we are sinful, like yeah. we are, we live in this broken, sinful state. Um, we are ruled by the desires and the passions of our flesh. Um, but because Christ came and he died for us, right? We no longer have to be ruled by those things. We get to uh, step into the life and the freedom that God has for us. So being transformed is moving away from that and stepping into that life that um, God created you for, right? Yeah. Um, and it's marked by uh, Christian maturity. It's marked by the fruit of the Spirit. Um, it's marked by things like good works. Like we uh, start to value the things that God values. And when we do that, we start to do the things um, that God has called us to do. Um, and so that being transformed basically just means that um, you are somebody who has stepped in and is pursuing God and, and, and um, striving to be the person that God desires you to be. Um, and eventually, like, your life starts to be fully marked by those things, not the things of the world. Okay, fair enough. So how would you, how would you, what's a good way to start on that path? Yeah, um, for everybody, it's to repent. Yeah. It's to um, put away the things of the flesh and to step into the things of God. And, yeah. um, you know, I think we think of repentance as just, oh, I'm sorry, God. Um, but it's more than that. It is 
uh, basically turning your back on on the things um, that you were engaged in and on your flesh and, and saying, I am all in, I am pursuing pursuing God in this way. Um, you know, and part of repenting though is, is admitting your failure and asking the Holy Spirit to to help you become the person that he wants you to be. You know, I, I can... Uh, I can't in my own strength make myself a good person. Right. I can't make myself holy. Like I, I need Jesus to not only atone for me, but I need the Holy Spirit to work in me to help me become who God wants me to be yeah. today. Okay. Good. Well, I'm going to change pace yeah, here because we've gotten a little heavy, a little heavy. Uh, on this, uh, which good. I mean, it's it's, it's okay. Good stuff, you know, like, but yep. I'm with you. Okay. Here, Here's just a fun random question. Which, oh boy. So you're, you're, not from Southwest Ohio. No. I'm not from Southwest Ohio. Matt is not. Brooke, you're from here? Born and raised? Brooke is from here. Okay. You're the expert now. So my question here is, um, what's the strangest thing that people in Southwest Ohio do? Oh, gosh. Or say? Okay. I don't know if this is the strangest, okay. but it's the one that just popped into my mind. See if Brooke agrees with this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> something that... And I've started to do it because I've lived here for over 10 years now, which yeah. is wild to me. But um, people always um, make every name of a store possessive. Yeah. So I'm not going to Kroger. Kroger I'm going Kroger's. to Kroger's. Uh, I'm Aldi's. Not going, I go to Aldi's. Walmart's. Um, Walmart. I, I don't know if I've heard that one so much. Um, people, but like Kroger is the big one. Like, And I kept hearing people go, I'm going to Kroger's. And I'm like, Kroger's what? <laughs> you know, like, uh, that that was uh, that's true. That Brooke was is, to me. is kind of nodding her head. Yes, she's you nodding it now. Too? Yeah. Um, do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, at first I was like, well, so right okay, play. in yeah. Missouri, they didn't do that. Now they have their own. Okay, we, we but they didn't do that. Problem. But they that didn't... one specific was eye eye opening to me. Here, okay, here. yeah. I feel like Matt. I don't know if you agree with this because we're from the same part of Ohio that we did that in Northeast Ohio too. You disagree with me? We kind of okay, see. as much. Okay. I feel it's more prominent down here. I would for sure yeah. with the Krogers, but we don't have Kroger up by us, which yeah. is weird, yeah. but... <laughs> Giant Eagle. Giant Eagle. Giant Eagle. Yeah. And Acme. So that's, a, that's another thing that's a, a little different is... Uh, <laughs> so where I grew up is... Um, you, you go to Columbus, they have both. Yep. Giant Eagle and Kroger. I don't go to Columbus very often. We're so close. It is. Uh, in, I don't uh, like Giant Eagle. So, I was not a so fan. So where I grew up is just a few hours away from Bentonville, Arkansas, which is where Walmart right. started and is headquartered at. Um, and so we don't have a ton of like yeah. grocery stores. It's uh, My hometown had uh, Aldi and Walmart. And then on the other side of town, there was this one grocery store that every like two years, it becomes a different yeah. grocery store. Um, that, you know, people try, but everything's yeah. Walmart. Well, one thing that I noticed, this was just the thing that people looked at me strange when I was down here, but like, you know, like a, a neighborhood with like cul-de-sacs and, yeah. and thing like that, like kind of a planned neighborhood where you're not just going on a main street. Right. Um, we'd call those allotments. Allotments. Okay. So we, but down here they call them neighborhoods. So I would like I say, call that a neighborhood. Yeah. So so we would say that, and people would look at them like, huh? But the one thing that was the strangest to me, Brooke, I'm not sure if if you have ever experienced this, but when we moved here, someone said to us, "We live in Settlers Walk, okay?" And they said, "Oh, they just they're building Austin Landing just across the street." And we're like, oh, cool, they're building it across the street. We drove around for like 15 minutes looking for it. Because it was not across the street. Yeah. It I, was like across the street. It was about a mile down. And then you had to take a left. You, you just know? remind me of another, another Does one. Does that, do, do people say ac across the street? It doesn't mean, it it's, just means it's close. So I've, that's the other <laughs> No, word. Brooke is saying the person who told me that was crazy. I, when I moved up here, I started hearing people say across, like with a D at the end, across. I can't even say it. Like, I never, like I said, what? What do you across say? the across, street. Like, across. I can't even say it. I can't even say it. But like they put a D at the end of a cross. And that's a that's that's a new one for me. But yeah, that's the other thing, like how people tell directions is, yeah. is very uh, you know, that's all actually like there's a joke about how like men and yeah. women do directions and what, what about the um if you need to like pull out a vacuum, you sweep? Yeah, that one that's new. It, I always call it vacuuming. Okay. Not sweeping. Brooke, what you do you sweep think? with brooms? <laughs> like you say sweep? You say sweeped? Yeah, that's what I thought. Matt I, sweeped. I like a vacuum. vacuum. Matt, he just likes to be different. So I, I like how like they uh, say it in like England, Hoover. 
Oh, I, really? I'm Hoover. Yeah. It's like, you know, because like Hoover it's is a brand. from our area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From from Northeast Ohio, Canton. Yep. Area, so. The sweeping one confused me because people are like, I'm going to sweep the carpet. I'm like, you're like, wait, with a broom. With a broom? I don't think I don't know how well. far vacuuming sweep goes. Works so better. So no, <laughs> vacuuming makes a lot more sense. I mean, this just the truth of it. Okay, we'll go back to our serious right. questions now. Tra- transition here. Okay, what is something that you have found helpful or would be helpful um, against wanting more in life? You talked yeah. about the being conformed is. We always are pursuing more. No matter how much yeah. we have, we want more. So what's something that you find that helps combat that? Yeah. So so the the antidote to greed yeah, is a better way to say yeah. it. Uh, the antidote to greed is uh being content. Yeah. Uh, or but the 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 way that makes what makes you content is actually gratitude. Yeah. Right. Is being thankful for what um God has given you. Um uh, and we were actually talking about this a little bit earlier today, but um I, you know, I don't like my car. Yeah. Like it gets horrible gas mileage. Every light's on the dash and it's not worth fixing. Um, and I have like, I want a mm-hmm. new car and I'm, it's really easy for me to be discontent yeah. with, with what I have. Um, and th- this may look silly if you're passing me and you see me do this, but, um, I have started when I start feeling discontent, I actually out loud say, God, thank you for my car. Uh, thank you that my car is uh, paid for. I don't have, you know, like, thank you for this blessing in my life, right? Um, and, and it's may seem silly, right, to actually in my car by myself say that out loud. Um, but I am uh, speaking it to myself, trying to yeah. remind myself that mm-hmm. I have, this is a blessing from God. Yeah. And even though it's not what I yeah. want, yeah, I would love a pickup truck, right? right? That's, you know, uh, I can either choose to be discontent and just be grumpy all the time because I don't have what I want. Right. Or I can choose to be thankful for what God has given me. Yeah. And, and so when I focus on being thankful and I focus on how God has provided and blessed me, yeah. Um, you start feeling silly mm-hmm. when uh when you get discontent. You start feeling silly when you get greedy. Yeah, you're like, well, you start to realize how many things you should actually be thankful for. Oh, yeah. You're like, wow, I actually have a lot of things in my life I'm thankful for. And you're you can just feel your attitude change. Yeah. I, you know. This isn't like a uh, universally true blanket statement, yeah. but in general, right? Um, like <laughs> the worst life in America, like is better than some of the average life lives in other areas of the world, yeah. right? Um, and it doesn't make your life like it doesn't diminish your problems. Yeah. It doesn't mean um, you can't suffer, right? That's not what I'm saying. Um, but when we step back and we actually look at uh, what we have and we look at and where we live and what we have access yeah. to. Um, I mean, well, we're all we striving be to be content. We're all striving to be, yeah. uh, to feel like we have enough, so, but it doesn't matter what life stage you're in or the amount of money you make, you always want more. Well, so I think what you s- just said, we're all striving to, to be content. Yeah. Right. Um, the world doesn't tell you that that's the end goal, but that's actually what you're searching for. Yeah. You're searching for contentment, but the world says the way that you will be content is if you just get enough. Yeah. And and the problem with that lie is you get enough. Yeah. And then immediately you're like, but there's more. Right. Right. And so you keep chasing it because uh, being content has nothing to do with what you actually have. It doesn't. Being content has everything to do with having the attitude that says, God, I am grateful for what you've given me. Yeah. And I'm going to trust that what you have given me is enough. And I'm going to trust that what you haven't given me. Yeah. um, I don't need. Yeah. And, And that's, you know, that. It's true if I have a little and it's true if I have a lot. Yeah. Well, we have like multiple life stages represented here. Brooke in her 20s, teens, 18. <laughs> Brooke is 18. So did you just graduate? Or are you in, is this your senior year? No, it's no. Second year of college. Second, what? what? How does that work, Brooke? <laughs> okay, so we have a savant with us. I apparently, didn't. we didn't know that. We just learned something new about Brooke. Some of she's us a genius. Like, some Again, of us apparently, like, she's a genius. I graduated and I barely crossed the line. And Brooke's like... Yeah, I, I, I delayed my graduation by a year and graduated at 17. You know, I'm just kidding. You didn't skip anything? Dang. Were you homeschooled? Okay. I need, we need, I, my mind is. I was home teaching. I'm, I'm very confused right now. Okay. So <laughs> when I was, Probably we're gonna just going to, Brooke is really more in the lifestyle of someone who, who is in their 20s. Yeah. 
um, college and col- yeah, which even though she's younger, but so when I was in my twenties, what I thought of success is way different oh, yeah. than now. What I think is success, oh, yeah. Matt's in his thirties and you're in your thirties. And what I thought at that point in my life, Oh, if I only w- was able to like pay off this much yeah. debt, <laughs> then I would be good. And, and you think, man, like, so now I'm in my forties and I'm thinking like, you know, like, more of like, what do I have for like the next right. stage of my life? And, you know, each one I thought if I, if I could f- finally get to here, I'd feel content about yeah. where I am in life. But the more like, so for us, it was, you know, in our thirties, we had little kids. Yeah. Um, we weren't making very much, um, for a long chunk of time there. I was the only one working and working at a church, yeah. you know, so we're just trying to, we're just, you know, if we had, you know, a couple thousand dollars that we saved in a year, we were feeling really good right. about ourselves, right? Because we were, we, that was our goal is to just spend less than we made. Yeah. And now, you know, kids are in school more and we can, we can, my, you know, my wife has a job. So now we're making a little more, but we get a little more comfortable because now right. we can like afford to buy some extra right. things that we could never do or go on a few trips that we didn't used to be able to do. Right. Like, actually stay at a you know nicer hotel or right. something but the thing is but what's you, wrong with the motel six yeah so you start <laughs> but you start like living to Everything. a different lifestyle then you start getting used to that and you're like yeah. oh if i could only you know be able to do this right. so it just it's yeah. always the the goal just the closer you get to it the further away it becomes the closer you get to it the further away yeah because it's, it's a constantly moving, moving. You know? it's constantly moving um, and it's really difficult when you see what your neighbors have, yeah. Yeah. Um, to see what other people at your job have or your family members or someone who's maybe younger than you. And they're like, wow, they own their own business. And yeah. I'm, I'm sitting here and you know, you I'm, not going, even, I'm not oh, even, Oh man, I made all the wrong decisions. Right. And right. It's so easy yeah. to compare yourself to other people. Well, so I think this is where, uh, there's two things that, uh, we're told in scripture, right? We're told to be content with what you have yeah. and to be a good steward of what God has given you, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so just being content doesn't mean you get to just be passive with the things you've been blessed with. It doesn't mean that, um, actually, this is confusing because I just said you shouldn't strive for more, but it's actually beneficial for you to want more for your family, right? Um, especially as, as as dads and, uh, you know, you just mentioned it and that's where we are too, where we were the primary like breadwinner mm-hmm. for our family, right? Um it is very motivating to say, hey, I want my kid to have a better life than I had, mm-hmm. right? And so you work to that end. Um, the problem happens when that becomes like um, out of proportion. Like that well, You will defocused. never be content. You will never be content with that, with that right? Mindset. Um, but your family may benefit from it, but we're supposed to be content and good stewards. So, so it's not like we just get to say, well, I'm just going to be lazy and I'm not going to work because God will take care of me. And, but you should work. God has given you the ability to work and to be productive. And so you should do those, do that. And then, um, yeah, you're going to have the fruits of your labor. So, um, you know, he has blessed you with income and money. You need to use that wisely, but saying it must be nice. Like, to yeah. someone else is a very dangerous thing yeah. mindset yeah. to have because you're not content. If you think, oh, yeah. it must be nice to go out to eat regularly. It must be nice to go on those but vacations or have that nice car. You're, you're actually saying, I wish I had what you had, but I don't. And you're, spe- you know, and it's you're special. A, uh, you're special. You, yeah. you have it made. It's like, it's like projecting your discontentment. Uh, like, oh, yeah. Somebody, you then know. that's a curmudgeon. Yeah. That's a curmudgeon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and as long as you have that mentality, like you probably will never get those things you actually want. Um, because you're so focused on where you're mine. stuck on mine, um, and it's really about yeah. it's not about all the things I can hold on to. Yeah, it's about being content and being a generous person. Those are the things that lead to yeah. true contentment in life. You, you, part of the reason you exist is you exist with the purpose of blessing the world around you and being a light to the world around you. Um, and I think when it comes to the things we have, it's not as complicated as we think, it's not as complicated as we think, but when we come so focused with what we have and what we think we should have, right. Um, we overlook all the opportunities that God gave us to be generous with what we have, you know? So we say, Oh, I don't have enough to, um, I don't have enough to give to this person who's needy, but you do. Right. Um, just don't go out to eat one time. Yeah. Right. Like there's, there's things like that. We don't often think about with our lives. Yeah. Um, God has given you everything you need for what he's called you to do 
yeah. in that moment. Well, this is something that I d agree with Dave Ramsey about is he says, automate the, mo the important yeah. things in life. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, uh, you know, yeah. if you struggle with, with those things, so like saving for retirement and future, those are important things because, you know, you're not going to be able to work forever. Uh, being generous, giving to your church, giving to charities, um, so, you know, giving, giving to people in need, automate those things. Think, it's, it's not fun to pay your bills, right? Um, so if you're relying upon your own motivation and your own energy, um, you're never going to get around to it, yeah. right? Um, it's, especially when you're starting out with trying to be generous, right? It is not easy to give money to people, other people, right? That's just not on paper, not a fun thing. It's not natural for our flesh to want to be generous with other people. Um, so like set yourself up in a system that forces you to do that a few times so that you start becoming okay with it. And then you're eventually, I think naturally you're going to start seeing how that helps people. And that becomes way more motivating. Um, so it's easier to do, but yeah, the things that aren't fun in life that you need to do automate those. Yeah. So you're not having to, you're not putting yourself in the position where you can easily say, I don't want to do that today. Right. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I think I had one more question I wrote down. Okay. One more question. How do you renew your mind? Yeah. How do you do that? How do I you mean, do we that? We talked a little bit about this. Yeah. This earlier. is actually the thing I wish I had had some more time yeah. um, to talk about. You know, I said you should uh, read your Bible regularly. Yep. You should pray persistently. It's, so so I just want to say one yeah. kind of, it's see It feels very churchy. To, to use to a, use, alliteration. So, well, no, 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 not to. Well, that does too. <laughs> but but to be like, because the Bible says yeah. so, right? Yeah. Read the Bible, you yeah. know, like, but but why yeah. Why is that important? So, I think that, so, because I think you did a really good job at, at, bringing home that point yeah. about content. Yeah. I think when you're talking about the content that we consume yeah. changes so, us. So the content you consume informs what you believe yeah. and, and that informs what you do, right? And so you should fill your mind with God's truth. Yeah. And where we receive God's truth is in his word, in the Bible. Um, and so you should read it and fill your mind with the truth of the Bible. You know, Dave and I talked about this actually few weeks ago on the podcast, uh, we talked about Awana and how mm -hmm. I did that. Um, and in Awana, I memorized a ton of scripture and I filled my mind yeah. uh, with the scripture. And there are times where I am about to uh, use my tongue to cut somebody down yeah. and I'll hear a verse pop in my head and I say, oh, I shouldn't say that. And I don't. Um, and there are, and that is just like something I did when I was in middle and high school, right? And here I am, you know, 15 years later, in those verses, I hit them in my heart mm -hmm. and they, they, they inform me and they help me not to do those things. Cool. So that's why you should fill your mind with, with yeah. the truth that God has in scripture. Um, also, how can you know what God uh, wants you to do yeah. unless you're allowing him to tell you what he wants you right. to do, right? That's where we learn. Yeah. And Brooke graduated Awana in two years. <laughs> <laughs> do you even know what that is? Okay, cool. <laughs> cool people. Okay, well, thanks for spending some time yeah. with us. Thanks for answering some questions. And our techie people over there with the microphones and switcher boards and stuff, thanks for uh, spending some time with us today. Yeah. And for all of you uh, who are watching us or listening to us, we appreciate you. Make sure you hit the like and you subscribe. To the podcast To podcast. the podcast, podcasting. Time. Podcast. So you can to help the greenhouse to gathering. Help the gathering podcast. All right, see ya. Bye. <laughs>